Hello, this is Pastor Carl here, and I would like to welcome you to the daily message. Let's get right into the Word. If you would, I'm going to go to the book of Mark in chapter number 16, and I just want to read the first four verses. It says in Mark 16, verse number 1, Now when the Sabbath was past, this is the Sabbath that would be after the uh, crucifixion. Now when the Sabbath was past, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices that they might come and anoint him. Very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb where the sun had risen. And they said among themselves, Who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? But when they looked, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. May Lord add a blessing to the reading and to the hearing, and more importantly, to the application of his word. Uh, we celebrated Easter, and it was a little bit unusual for a lot of us. We're normally used to a big uh, Easter service, and my tradition is that you get dressed up, and you'll normally see my wife in hats, and normally after the uh, Easter service, the family would normally come together for Easter, and we either have a meal uh, at one of our houses, or we go out and we have a meal. Well, we didn't do that this time. But you know, the Lord spoke to me, and he said, you can still have a meal. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Job said about the word, I've treasured it even more than my necessary food. And the Lord put on our hearts that we could get our family together via Zoom. So on Sunday, around about 11 o'clock, we had a Zoom call. Had to choose 11 o'clock because 31 of our family was in Africa. And then we had about another 13 that was here in the U.S. And we all got together over a Zoom call. We prayed, we worshiped, and we had the word. And we laughed and joked and really enjoyed each other, even though we were not in the same room. This coronavirus has uh, brought different things to our plate that I believe the Lord wants us to consider as we move forward, because these are things that bring people together and focus us even on the right thing. We had a meal. It wasn't food, but it was food. It was food that nourished the spirit. Our text today is about a woman, Mary Magdalene, and a few other women. And they were the ones who came to the tomb on that first Easter morning. The men, well, men, I'm sorry to say, we were back hiding somewhere. But the women came. And one of those women was Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene came and she brought, along with the other women, precious ointments to anoint Jesus. They remembered that another Mary had anointed Jesus before he went to the cross. Mary of Bethany. She'd anointed him before his death. But now here's Jesus. He's died. They were probably there, well, they were there, and they, and they saw the cruelty that he was subjected to and the uh, uh, shame he was uh, subjected to and the pain that he endured, but they couldn't do anything about it. And the Bible says that when Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus, when they uh, got the body from uh, 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 Pilate and, and, and uh, uh, Joseph of Arimathea offered his uh, tomb to lay the body of Jesus in, that Mary and the other women, that they watch, and they knew exactly where Jesus was laid. It was The Sabbath was coming. So they rested on the Sabbath, but just before they rested on the Sabbath, they went and they bought these precious perfumes to anoint Jesus' body. The Sabbath has ended. And so now they're getting ready to go to the tomb. But they know something. They know that they saw that there was this huge stone, huge rock that had been rolled in front of the door of the tomb. And they looked at one another, and they knew that they did not have the strength to roll that stone away. But it didn't stop them from going to the tomb. 
There are things that we're going through now, and there will be obstacles after uh, the coronavirus is ended, and, and we start to figure out how we're going to uh, live life again. And some of these things will look like obstacles, just like that stone looked like it was an obstacle. But Mary and the other women chose to move toward the obstacle, believing that when they got there, something could happen, something could change. Mary never dreamed that an angel would come and move the stone. And the angel didn't come to move the stone so that Mary and uh, Peter and others could get in, or rather that Jesus could get out. It was so that Mary and others could get in to see that the tomb was empty. But there was an obstacle in Mary's way. But she didn't let that obstacle stop her. She went as far as she could go, and the Lord made up the difference. And there are things when I think about my own life, there have been times when I couldn't figure out how something could work out. But thank God, because of the grace of God, the faithfulness of God, I kept going. Sometimes fear would grip me because I said, what's going to happen now? And what I found is that though I'm faithless, he's faithful. He cannot deny himself. And just like what happened for Mary and the other women on that first Easter Sunday morning, I found happened in my life. Stones, rocks, obstacles, doors I didn't think would be open, but they were open. As we leave, not yet, but soon to come, this coronavirus era, we're coming into a new era where there will be new things, and we need to move toward those new things even though we don't know quite how they're going to work out. Because the Lord has a way of working things out. Remember the children of Israel? The children of Israel that had gone to the Red Sea, the Lord had directed them with a, a pillar of a, a, a fire by a night and a pillar of cloud by day, had directed them to this very spot a spot where they were hemmed in because there were wilderness on either side, a spot where they were hemmed in because all of a sudden the Egyptians showed up behind them. But the Lord led them there. And the Lord had a way of escape for them. But it was important for them to go as far as they could go to obey what the Lord had given them to obey. For Mary, she had a desire. And that desire was to give everything she could to her Savior. So Mary and Mary and, and Salome, they, they all took all that they could take and they brought it to him, not knowing how they were going to actually give it to him. But that didn't stop them. They brought it to them. And there's something else that they didn't realize. So there was something that, that they realized was going to be an obstacle. They didn't know how to overcome that obstacle. But because they kept on going, they found that God had removed the obstacle. But then there was something else that they did not know and therefore could not plan for. I don't believe that they knew that that tomb had been guarded by Roman soldiers. It was the Pharisees and, and, and the religious rulers that, that went to a, a Pilate and let him know that what would be worse than crucifying him is if what he said came to pass, because he said in three days that he would rise and, 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 and we can't let that happen. So make sure you put some soldiers. We're asking for some soldiers to be at the entrance of the tomb so that no one could steal his body because we know he can't rise from the dead, but someone could steal his body, and, and that particular rumor will continue. So Pilate did that. Pilate went and let them borrow soldiers and put them at the tomb. But Mary and Mary and Mary Magdalene and Mary and Salome, they didn't know that soldiers were at that tomb. This was done outside of their purview or outside of their view. And even though they didn't know it, they didn't have to worry about it because God had worked on their behalf. The Bible reminds us that he will take their crooked things and he will make them straight. 
And as we prepare, I know that this coronavirus is, might go on for a little while longer, but it's going to end. And there's some new things that we're learning. Just like I learned how to celebrate Easter with my family via Zoom. Just like we're learning how we can come together as the body of Christ and pray. Just like our government is learning that we can come to agreements on things in a short amount of time. Those are good things. Those are things that we want to carry forward. But there will be obstacles. There will be things in between. There will be things that will uh, try to prevent us from getting there. We need to make up in our mind that what the Lord has called us to do, we will do, even though we may not see how it's going to work out. Because he has always shown himself faithful. He's shown himself faithful to us as a church. He showed himself faithful to us as individuals. So I encourage you, don't think about the obstacle. Think about how great our God is. He may not let you know how he's going to do what he's going to do, but that doesn't matter. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think. I encourage you, remember these women didn't know how to roll back the stone didn't know that there would be guards that were there, but they didn't have to worry about that. They just had the walk in the path that the Lord called them to walk in, which was to honor the Lord as best they could. And that was to bring the spices that they had. And they wouldn't have to use the spices. It's interesting that that same Mary, Mary Magdalene, was the one who met Jesus, the first one to meet Jesus risen from the dead. And I always remember something about her. Through two on the road to Emmaus, they walked with Jesus for seven miles, didn't realize who it was. But that Mary Magdalene, when she met Jesus in the garden, thinking him to be the gardener, he said to her her name, Mary. And as soon as he said to her her name, Mary, she knew who it was. And she even wanted to cling to him. But he says, no, don't cling to me. I have to go to my father. But what, what's remarkable to me is that all that Jesus had to say to Mary was her name. Because Mary had learned to recognize his voice. I pray that we do the same. God bless you, and we'll see you next time. Blessings. Hi, I'm Jerry Dearman. Thank you for watching today. To not miss out on any of our videos, you can subscribe by clicking here. Or to watch another video, you can click here. Go ahead, pick one.